Hey guys, it's Aaron, and today I wanna to talk to you about why I quit my full-time job and took a 50% pay cut to get an internship. But before we start, I'd like to give a word of warning. The approach that I'm gonna tell you about worked for me, but it's not for everybody. I had a few things going on that made this a good option for me, and maybe you do too. Namely, I'm not married, I don't have a mortgage, I don't have any kids, and I'm eligible for internships. So what I mean by that last one is that I'm currently pursuing a degree that would allow me to succeed in this field. So often if you're not pursuing a degree, you're not eligible for internships. So find out if that suits you. If you meet all four of those, then maybe this is a good option. All right, so why did I quit my full-time job for an internship? Simply put, I hated my job. It was my first job after college, my undergraduate degrees in finance, and I was working as a corporate financial analyst for a Fortune 250 company. The pay was good for where I was living, I liked my coworkers, I liked the location, and there was definitely upward mobility. But ultimately, the work was stressful and unrewarding to me. As a corporate financial analyst, your life sort of revolves around the accounting calendar, which means that one week out of each month, you might be expected to work up to 60 hours. Add on top of that quarterly forecasts, annual forecasts, and there were these times during the year that were blocked out, which you couldn't take off even if you wanted to, even if you gave a year of notice, they needed you there at that time. Now, work-life balance being one of my motivating factors, this didn't really sit well with me. Beyond that, the analysis I was doing was just really basic and not that enjoyable. I was supporting the marketing organization there and I would describe what I was doing more like bookkeeping than any sort of actual analysis and that's not really what I signed up for. So I decided to make a change. So I decided to finally take the leap and switch into something that I'd been eyeing since my undergraduate degree which is data science. Now, before I get any further, I've really got to give some credit here to the YouTuber Ken G for all of his data science content, specifically his top five data science internship tips video, which gave a lot of really great information about how to break into the field as an intern and how to succeed once you finally do. I left a comment on that video and he actually got back to me saying that he thought that an internship was the best way to break into data science, particularly as a career changer, so, that's really part of what helped me pull the trigger. So Ken, if you're watching, thanks again. And if you haven't seen Ken's videos, I'll link them in the description. If you're into data science, he's maybe my favorite YouTuber in that space. So if you don't know what data science is, that's okay because neither does anyone else. You could ask five data scientists to define data science and you'd get five very different answers. But I think that mostly what you could describe it as is machine learning and artificial intelligence. but it's really not important what you're trying to transition into. Uh, the way that I did this could work with almost any field. As long as you're eligible for internships, this is an option for you. Fortunately for me, my school has a strong local reputation and I was able to use their internal job board to find an internship in the area, which I'm working remotely at now. And I'll make a more detailed video in the future about how I got this internship and how to get an internship more broadly. I've got some thoughts about that because I feel like people really underappreciate smaller companies when it comes to internships, but more on that later. Now, this is where I really had to do things a little bit differently. Uh, most summer internships are pretty short, hence summer internships, about two or three months. And coming from a full-time position, that wasn't really gonna work for me. So I had to find a way to turn it into a longer engagement as the company that I was interested in and wanted to hire me was no different. Their program typically only lasted about two or three months. Fortunately for me, however, or strategically, if I wanna give myself more credit than I probably deserve, I picked a smaller company, which oftentimes smaller companies will have more flexibility on things like pay or term or anything like that. And I was able to negotiate a six month internship with them with the possibility to extend for a few more months after that, which made me feel really comfortable about making the leap and taking this pay cut, knowing that, okay, I can survive on this amount of pay for the next few months and then we can go from there. And that's the really important piece if you're thinking about doing something like this is you've got to find a company that will work with you. And in my experience, smaller companies are the way to go. It's a little bit easier to get into them. They're a little bit more flexible with you and you can get just as good an experience while really getting more of the other things that you need. On top of just the flexibility that it added for me, I think that having a longer internship actually has a lot of benefits if it's something that works for you. Now, I am going to school part-time, so I can work these longer internships. If you can't, maybe find a different way to do this, maybe an internship over multiple summers or something like that. Because I think extended internships actually have a lot of benefits that might commonly be overlooked. 
First of all, you'll get more projects and experience to list on your resume, and you'll have a better idea of how a data science project or whatever project you're interested in works from start to finish. You'll really get to see a whole project all the way through, and that sort of experience on your resume is gonna be really valuable. Second, you'll get more exposure to the company and to the team you'll be working with, and as they get more comfortable with you, they'll become more and more likely to wanna to hire you on full-time afterwards, because if they were to hire someone else, they would have to teach them all the stuff that you already know. So, in a way, it makes it as easy as possible for the company to want to hire you, which is a good thing. And finally, one of the big things for me also was it's just more comfortable. I've got a lot more time now to look for full-time positions, and since taking this, I've actually had a few interviews, and. I get to be a little bit more choosy than I might otherwise be, which is a good spot to be in. So that takes me to the conversation of how the internship has been so far, which in a word, it's been amazing. I learned more about SQL in the first two weeks of this internship than I did for my entire life beforehand. I'm much stronger in R and Python and a lot of the other tools that you need to succeed in this field just from having this internship because I get to work in them every single day. On top of that, the work-life balance here is much better. now. For what it's worth, part of that is being an intern, there's less expectations on you generally, but the other part is that it's not corporate finance and work-life balance, like I said before, is a really big deal to me. So if you're considering making a career change because of work-life balance, all I can say is, for me, this worked. So as long as you're making a career switch and you meet the four criteria that I mentioned before, this could be a really good option for you. And for what it's worth, if you don't meet those criteria, it's not completely hopeless you could really attempt to incorporate what you want to do into your current job, and hopefully something will open up for you. I was going that route, and in fact, right when I gave my notice, my boss told me they were trying to make a position for me, but they already knew that I wanted to go, I knew the position would take a long time, and my work-life balance would suffer in the middle, so I decided to make the leap anyway. But if I had stayed, it would have taken a little bit longer, but eventually I would have gotten to work in what I enjoy, mostly because I had put the effort into learning Python, learning R, taking on these projects and sort of making myself into the resident data science expert. And you could do the same with whatever your interest is, wherever you're at, assuming that it's sort of related to what you do now. And for now, it's been a success. You know, I don't have a full-time job lined up yet, but. I'm fielding offers and I'm talking to recruiters and I get to be a little bit picky, which is kind of nice. And in the future, I'm gonna be making videos about how to get your own internship and how to make the most out of it and hopefully how to turn it into a full-time job offer because honestly, I feel like that's a really good way to break into the field and other people have said the same thing. I mentioned Ken G before. So stay tuned and I'll keep you updated on this journey so far and talk about a lot more things, including data science, if that's something you're interested in. And in the meantime, please subscribe, hit the notification bell, leave a comment below. If you wanna talk about anything I mentioned in this video, I'm happy to continue the discussion there. So thanks for watching guys and I'll talk to you next time.